Hi, this is Joe. We're going to talk about a trade I did in Wells Fargo, and it's a swing trade. But as I've mentioned in several videos going back for the last few months, uh, our tendency, my partner and I's tendency has been to focus for swing trades. We've, we've liked to use uh, options uh, instead of trying to do the stock. And I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail as I move on. But the, the fact of the matter is you can control risk using the options in a much greater way. You don't have to deal with the overnight gaps and stuff. So you can determine how much you want to lose in a trade and then risk that in the option. And so uh, it, it, sometimes when you put a stock trade on with a stop, you don't get filled at the stop price. There's a lot of slippage. And if there's gaps, it could be a lot worse than that. So that's our reasoning. Uh, I'm going to get into the trade and show you all the reasons why. Uh, one of the main reasons has to do with ADX. So uh, let's go into that right now. Uh, so I've got the chart of Wells Fargo and I've got the four time frames up. And, uh, you know, it, the first thing looking at the monthly chart, notice how far away we moved away from the 18 month moving average. You see the distance from the breakdown level, which, you know, essentially, uh, you know, is up around 44, 45. Uh, and the 18 month is up at 44 as well. So you have a lot of distance there. That's the starting point. Then if you go and look at the weekly chart, and let's just zero in on this a little bit. Uh, notice how when the stock came down, it made a push higher and then it made a, a lower low. So you've got a, a fierce move to the downside, a rally up and then a, a lower low takes place. And I'm always trying to compare the momentum of this decline to this decline. So I, I'm always looking at that from the standpoint, of, does it look like the stock is gaining momentum or losing momentum? And I can just eyeball it without looking at any kind of momentum indicators now. I've been doing this long enough that I, I can see the pattern that it just looked to me like it's losing downside momentum. So one of the things you can look at when you if you use uh, ADX, um, is the DI lines and the top DI line. So red is, is in control here. That means the sellers are in control. And if you notice, you made a peak uh, a on this decline, you made a peak in the red. The sellers made a strong peak. And then we had a rally up and that caused a decline in the sellers or the, a decline in the red line or the DI line. And then when we made a new low in price, the sellers could not match the low that was or the peak that was made here. So in this instance, there's a divergence in the red DI and actually green did the same thing. If you notice, uh, I kind of like to look at it like a contracting formation where you're making lower the, the upper DI is making a lower high and the lower DI is making a higher low and they're kind of coming together. And once I see that, I think the odds are pretty high that we're going to form some kind of a consolidation pattern, some kind of a retracement, uh, a reversion to the mean type of a pattern. So at this point, uh, you know, you start looking at this trade, we started looking at it and we noticed there was a pretty good distance up to the 18 week moving average. That is the target for a counter trend trade in this instance. So um, you could look at the prior peak. Uh, let's just point this out. You know, the prior peak could be a target, but I like to use the moving average and make sure that I have room enough to the moving average for the trade to make sense. Uh, we're going to go down to a daily chart now. And you can see the divergence is a little bit more blatant when you look at it with the, the MACD and with the ADX. So uh, let's start with MACD. And you can see that you've got a, a lower low in price, pretty significant, and you're making a significantly higher low in MACD. We've talked about this. Go back through any old uh, momentum divergences uh, videos that I've done. Uh, I mean, this should be pretty, you should pretty much understand this by now, uh, if you didn't before you even watch my videos. So now let's look at ADX. You got a divergent, you got a, a new low taking place in price again, but notice the divergence in the ADX. This is what really piqued my interest in this stock in that when the stock went to a new low, the peak in the ADX, which is the blue line, could only make it to 25. And when you have a really powerful trend, look at how powerful of a decline you're in. 
And you're going to make a peak here, which was, you know, somewhere about 45, something like that. And then you make a peak here, which was over 60. And if you can continue to make peaks over 25, then the trend is probably strong enough to keep, keep declining. But the moment you make a peak in the red DI or the uh, off of their sellers and the, and the blue line can only make it up to 25, now you start looking for a reversal. So there's a big difference between MACD divergence for me and this ADX type, this type of divergence at ADX, where you make a peak at 25 or lower. It tells me that uh, you should be on the lookout for a reversal and not just a reversion to the mean. So a MACD uh, divergence normally just tells me, OK, just look for a reversion to the mean, look for a, a move back you know, back towards any type of uh, price resistance. But when I see ADX doing this, I'm on the lookout for something much more meaningful. And I might play it can more conservatively, but I'm still looking for some type of a pattern that, uh, you know, gives me enough room to, that I, or I at least think is gonna have enough room to make a three or four to one. Uh, on a MACD type divergence, I might only look for two to one and just get in really in and out really quickly. But on a, a ADX divergence like this, I might play for a much bigger uh, uh, upside move. So um, let's just zero in a little bit more on the, uh, on the daily pattern because I want to show one other point here. I want to combine different things because I'm always on the lookout for uh, confluence on all the types of patterns that I use. And one of the things that I notice is um, when you broke below this low, you didn't stay down, down there for very long. And, and then you had a rally up and you made a higher low. So let's just zero in a little bit more. So this higher bottom, I believe, looks a lot like the pattern that I showed, which was the spike and ledge pattern. Uh, or I'm sorry, an undercut. And it's actually an undercut and rally pattern. So you broke below these lows. Go back through that video I, I did not that long ago all called undercut and rally. And it's in this pattern is very, very similar. You broke through and made a higher bottom. The difference is I tend to look for uh, the higher time frame to be in an uptrend when this is in place. But if I have momentum divergence, I'm still considering this to be very, very interesting. So I've got this pattern. And also, if you notice, uh, if I go back to MACD, uh, you did hold on a divergent play, but then you also came down and made a little higher low. When you made the higher low, you had a little pinch play develop. So it's the combination of three or four different patterns that we use. If I go down to the hourly chart, uh, I want to point something out that I think is actually pretty important. Our entry was really not all that great. I mean, we saw this uh, on this day here uh, really kind of right near the end of the day. And we, we, we missed our entry. We would have probably done it, uh, even if before the breakout because of what was taking place on the daily chart. Uh, but we were pretty confident that based on what the ADX was doing, there was going to be more potential upside. So we were willing to do this right in the open. And what we did was we actually did the, uh, options and we did ones that were about, uh, you know, three weeks out. And we did the ones they cost us about 49, I think it was 49 cents. And, uh, you know, the idea behind this was to say, you know, we'll buy the option, know that whatever amount of money you want to risk in a trade, you put that amount of money in the option. And that's exactly what we did. And then we actually put an order to sell at uh, $2 because that would have been uh, basically a three to one uh risk reward. What ended up happening is because of this huge gap, we got filled at 278. So inside of a couple days, we were basically in this for two, two and a half days. Uh, we bought them at 49 cents, sold them at $2 and 78 cents. And it's the type of thing where once you put the trade on, you're not, there's no anguish. You're not watching. You're just letting the trade play out and you're looking for some upside to, to kick in. 
Um, obviously, this is a great this is a great situation where it plays out so quickly. I mean, we bought more time. We had more than three weeks in our options, so we weren't convinced that it was going to happen right away. But in this instance, the whole sector uh, in the financial area really made a, a pretty strong move, and uh, you know that was also part of the uh, reasoning for for why we wanted to do it. But at the same time, I just thought this was a real good example of how you can take all the kind of patterns that I've been mentioning mentioning, or at least several of them, and put them together for uh, a pretty good trade. Um, hope this was helpful. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.